All right. What we're going to be talking about now here is exposure. I need you guys to pay close attention to this concept because this is the weakness of computerized radiography. With computerized radiography, your images comes out perfect every single time. Just the right amount of density, just the right amount of contrast. It's not underexposed, it's not overexposed. Now, when you had film radiography, if your film came out too light or too dark, that also told you that you overexposed your patient or you underexposed your patient, right? So how your film came out also determined whether or not you use the appropriate technical factors in acquiring that image. You guys follow me so far? With computerized radiography, it doesn't matter what technical factors you use because you're the algorithm and the software program corrects it for you every time. So no matter what you do, if you choose the wrong KV and the wrong mass, or a combination of both, your image is going to come out sweet. So how come it doesn't just determine it for us automatically? Or What's that? How come it doesn't just determine our technical factors for us automatically? Okay, so the question is, why doesn't it determine our technical factors for us automatically? Okay. It can and, and it cannot, okay? This is why we give you the foundation of MA and, and KV. We give you the concept of MA and KV and what it does to uh, radiation exposure, which the machine does understand, okay? But the bottom line is we control that, okay? We're gonna control the KV and the mass because the computer cannot determine the size and shape of the patient. Okay? The machine cannot determine what kind of pathology the patient has. Okay? These are all things that we got to consider when trying to determine the, uh, the combination of technical factors that we use. It's not automatic with our x-ray machines. So it's kind of like we give it a base and they kind of like edit it for us? Exactly. Or? Exactly. Okay? So again, regardless of what technical factors you use, the algorithm is going to fix it for you so that your image comes out well all the time. Now, with that said, that's a danger to our patient exposure because, again, when our film came out of our processor, if it was too light, too dark, we knew that we either overexposed or underexposed our patient. Now with the pictures coming out perfectly all the time, and it doesn't matter what technical factors you use, how do we know the kind of exposure that our patient is receiving. For all we know, we could be killing them, right? But we wouldn't know it because our pictures are coming out just fine. So this is where this concept comes along. There is a way to check this. It's called the exposure units. We're gonna cover two of them. The first one here is the S number or the sensitivity number, okay? Now, in your radiographic screen, when the image comes up on your screen, in addition to the patient's demographic information, name, medical record number, date of birth, time, date, the hospital in which it was taken, so on and so forth, there's also going to be a number at the very top or bottom of your screen which will display your S number. This S number determines whether or not you're operating within safe parameters of your exposure. So for example, if I were doing a chest x-ray, I know as a technologist that to perform a chest x-ray, my safe parameter of S number should fall between 150 to 250. The numbers will differ from body part to body part. But let's just say for a chest x-ray, a safe range is between 150 to 250. Okay, so when I am putting my PSP through the reader, not only will it extract the image, because remember it's the phosphors that store the amount of x-ray energy um, that's coming from the patient, right? The remnant radiation. So not only is it extracting the image, but it's also determining the amount of energy that is stored within those crystals. So it's also going to tell me what type or quality of x-rays I use to acquire that image. 
So if it's between 150 to 250, it's good. Now what it says here is for a yes number is that it is inversely related. So with higher numbers, that means your patient was underexposed. With lower numbers, that means your patient, your patient was overexposed. All right? So over 250 indicates underexposure. Under 150 indicates overexposure. So as a quality assurance manager, not only am I going to look at the images that are coming up as my technologists are performing their studies, I'm also going to be looking at that S number to make sure that my technologists are operating within safe limits. Okay? No longer can I depend on the quality of my image because the quality of my image is always going to be good. Before, if it was too dark or too light, I knew whether or not my, my technologists were doing badly. Okay? The other number that we're going to be talking about here is the EI or the exposure index. It's also a number that you will find on the very top or bottom of your screen when the picture pops up. This is a little bit more, more legible, more easier to understand. Okay? Here, if the number goes up, if it's over your, your range, let's just say again, chest x-ray range is between 2.0 and 2.4. If my number is over 2.4, that means that I overexpose my patient. Under 2, it's underexposed. If it's between 2 and 2.4, you're safe, the patient's safe. Okay? Now, not only are these numbers good for patient exposure, but because a lot of our procedures that we are doing uh, does involve us in the procedural room, if the patient is within safe limits, that means we are also under safe limits because we keep track of our exposure by the amount of exposure our patients are receiving. Okay, so this is also good for us. Now here in our, in our lab, we have displayed both numbers, both the S sensitivity number and the EI exposure index, um, so our students understand the concept of both. In the facilities, once you guys start doing your clinical internship, it's going to be one or the other. And it all depends on who installed, who installed the unit. The Europeans, if it's a European type of um, extra unit, they like to use this S number, so everything's backwards. <laughs> Those Europeans. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. But they're a little backwards. And if you get like the, the Japanese or the American type of equipment, then the numbers that you will find are usually the EIs. Okay? But they both do the same thing. Okay? So checking either the sensitivity number or the exposure index verifies that optimal quality digital radiograph images were obtained with the least possible dose to the patient. Okay, Because that is our objective, to get good images while maintaining, uh, maintaining and providing minimal radiation to our patients. Okay, This is what's happening here. Okay, We've got two studies of the, the knee. Up here is your radiographic study utilizing film. KV remains constant, so we're using 70 KV in each of these images here. With our first one, we use 1.6 mass. Okay? Too light, right? So we did another exposure. We doubled our exposure to 3.2. So we went from 1.6 to 3.2. We doubled it. We doubled our x-ray exposure. Still light. We doubled it again, 6.4. We're getting there, right? Let's do it again. Now we're going from 6.4 to 12.5. Looks pretty good. At 25, it looks even better, okay? But with film, again, you were able to assess the patient exposure by also looking at the exposure of your film. Your film was the telltale of your patient exposure. Here is computerized radiography. Same study with computerized radiography. Here's 2.5 mass. Looks good, doesn't it? We doubled it to 5. Looks the same, doesn't it? We doubled 5 into 10 mass. 
40 mass, and then, oh boy, 80 mass. That's a lot of x-rays. <laughs> so we went from 80, we went 280 from 2.5. This is almost 35 times the patient exposure. Do you understand what I'm saying here? We could be killing our patients and not know it because the images look good every time. Your 80 mass looks just as good as your 2.5 mass. So it is our job, not only as a quality control technologist, but you guys shooting the x-rays, to make sure that you set your technical factors appropriately. Don't be so dependent on your x-ray machine and computer that, you know, my image is going to come out good all the time. This is what happens. They go and shoot an x-ray. They're not looking at the control panel anymore. They're just hitting the button. But the technical factors there could be set up for a chest x-ray. Now you've got a patient in there for a foot x-ray, and you're using foot techniques on someone who should be a chest x-ray. Do you understand what I'm saying? They get lazy, so they're not checking their technical factors. They're just hitting the button. Okay? We don't want you doing that. I was a CI when I was at uh, Chaitin College, and I went to go check on my students shooting uh, portable chest x-rays. And I swear, I swear, they were giving the patients radiation therapy. Oh it was God. so high. <laughs> and, then I, and then I blasted, and I blasted, the, um, I blasted the, uh, the supervisors of the hospital because they should be keeping close watch of the students, and they're not. That's irresponsible. But you do have responsibilities as technologists. Okay, so the difference then, uh, advantages between computerized radiography Here's a new term, DR. What does DR stand for? Direct radiography. Oh my goodness, how do you know? How do you know that? Okay, it's direct radiography. It's not digital, it's direct. You're, cor you're absolutely correct. DR stands for direct radiography. So before I continue with this, what direct radiography is, with computerized radiography, we're using imaging plates, right? And we still have to process those imaging plates through the reader, right? Direct radiography, there are no cassettes. Okay, you take an x-ray, the sensors are in the table or on the chessboard where you're taking a chest x-ray, and the images, the signals go straight directly into the software program, and your images come up simultaneously up on your screen. Boom, boom, simultaneously. That's direct radiography. Okay? It's a nice thing to have, but it's not as portable, and um, it does have some limitations. Okay, it is nice to have, but it does have some limitations. All right, so the imaging plate can be used repeatedly, as we said. So, uh, computerized radiography can be used with existing units. We don't have to de gut our room. We can use the same equipment. You do not have to be in a light, tight, area, we do everything out here in the open, we're not even using the dark room anymore except for laboratory experiments. But all the images that we produce is out in open air. Okay, we'll skip this, can be read in 20 seconds. Everything can be manipulated, contrast, brightness, um, your zoom, your enhancement, okay, negative and positive images, cropping, all that stuff can be manipulated. Also, the advantages is, as you saw with the previous slide, you can't have repeats based on your poor decision in selecting your technical factors anymore. Whatever you use, your image is always going to come out good. Okay, so it eliminates the exposure errors. Okay, but it doesn't eliminate things like poor positioning or the patient moving. Okay, we can't eliminate those. We're three-dimensional, and when you come into the program, we're going to teach you the proper way to position your patients for the procedure, because we're three-dimensional. You've got to have to angle that body part just right to look at that specific anatomy. And even then, we can still get errors, okay? But it eliminates the exposure errors, okay? Instant visibility. No film processing costs, a reduction of negative environmental effects due to chemical processing. With direct radiography, no cassette is involved. 
because of the phosphorus sensitivity, we can even use even lower technical factors. Isn't that great? We can use lower technical factors, but we still got to fall within those S and EI numbers. Okay? Elimination of hard copies. Elimination of misplaced radiographs. Instead of 90 second per, fir, uh, per film, now we're doing 20 second per imaging plate. Boom, 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 boom. Can we get more patients through our department? Sure can. So we got increased patient flow. And then we talked about teleradiology earlier. Image transfer, image sharing. Okay, the disadvantages is you can have possible over and under exposure because your images look great every time. So we've got to reflect on the S and EI numbers. Okay? Skip this, skip this, cross that out for now. We'll talk about it when you get into the program. So cross out the last two bullet points. Uh, cross this out, you don't need to know this right now. Okay, and this is about the workflow we talked about earlier. All right, any questions? So you guys have a test next week on the material we covered for the beginning of Unit 3 up until this point. Okay, questions? All right, guys, have a great week, great weekend.